Okay, uh, in this very quick video, we're going to look at um, indirect questions. Um, very, very quick, and we'll do this in parts because I've just uh, I've already finished one video. I thought I may as well get another one in uh, before I start classes today. Um, so let's look at um, direct questions and see how things roll, all right? With a direct question, we know we're starting in one of two places. If I have an object and I want to confirm an object with you, let's say my object is... Um, uh, mastodon is a rock band kids um, and my verb would be like so I have that object so where am I going to start well I'm going to start here I'm going to have this a B C D so my direct question will look like this do you like mastodon simple um, if I don't have an object and I'm trying to discover an object well then I'll start over here and it'll be A, B, C, D, which will be what music do you like? And that's it. Or what bands? What bands? That's my question word. That's blue because I'm trying to discover it. It will become my object in my answer. And then we have auxiliary, subject, verb. Easy. And um, so that's our direct questions, right? Our direct question will start with an auxiliary or it'll start with our um, question word. That's it. So indirect, we're going to do something different. We're going to start over here. Now, this can be another question. It could be a do you know question. It could be a statement. I don't know. It could be another statement. For example, um, I was wondering, which is us saying that there was a question in my head a minute ago, and this is what the question was. So it's a way of asking a question without asking a question. But either way, we're going to do something different here. Our focus with the indirect is to get rid of the auxiliary. The auxiliary is what kind of makes things into a question for us. So we're going to come here and say, for example, I don't know um, where uh, they and then live. And so we're going to pull this away entirely. And so we'll say here, uh, uh, let me see if it's, uh, um, let, let's say we're looking at this question here. What bands do you like? Well, I'd start with, I don't know. So that's my first point here, A, right? The next point I have to hit is my question, right? So from this point on, what bands? This is telling me the information that I want. Even though it's not an actual question, it doesn't matter. And that's it. Now we just get rid of this auxiliary and we say, you like. And that's it. It's no longer a question, but it's going to give us an answer that we're looking for. Now, what if we have some good old fashioned gossip, right? So this is do. So what happens when we look at does? We're looking at gossip, our fofoca, right? So we'll say same thing, I don't know. And then what we're looking for is our question word because we're trying to, again, we're trying to discover this information here. And instead of uh, you like, it's gonna become he likes. So what's important is Inside this sentence, this looks like a sentence. Um, so let's say uh, we have, for example, what time is it? Right? This is nothing wrong with this question. But if you ask this question to a person on the street that you don't know, yeah, it's rude. If I say, excuse me, what time is it? That's rude. Why? Because I'm asking them to give me something. Um, so the redirect for that question is, for example, um, do you have the time? That's a redirect. And what do we mean by a redirect? It's a yes, no question. You're not asking the person to give you the time. You're just asking if they have it. But they know that when you ask X, you actually want the answer for Y. And so this is just a polite exchange that we have. Um, in Brazil, uh, I'll walk into a room with an ice cream and uh, I'll see someone sitting, for example, at a table, and just, we do the same thing, but we do it with ice creams. I have to say, você quer? And that person has to say, nobody got me. And now I can eat my ice cream. It's silly, it's meaningless. If I don't offer, I'm a piece of shit. If they say yes, they're fucking horrible. Um, so it, it's just a silly, polite request that we do in Brazil that we have to do. Because if you don't, your, your vovó will hit you in the back of the head with a chinelo. Um, in English, we do the same thing, but we do the same thing for polite requests that when I want the answer to Y, I ask you X. B 
because I asked you X out of a sign of respect, you give me the answer for Y. And so here we can say, do you have the time? The literal answer is yes, I do. I don't need any. Thank you very much. But we know we say, yeah, sure, it's um, 20 to 9. Or, for example, um, we could say, for example, uh, do you know? So now we, again, we have a yes, no question. We're asking a question, but it's not someone trying to give, we're not asking them directly to give it to us. So we'll say, what time again? And instead of, is it, like going from an auxiliary uh, to a subject, we're going to use the subject and go to verb. And that's it. So in this structure here, you don't have a normal question structure. Normally, a question looks like this. What time is it? But we don't have that. You can't have two auxiliaries in one sentence or in, in one question. You can't. So this one's not allowed to be an auxiliary. So it becomes what? It becomes a verb. And so our question becomes, do you know what time it is? And the person says, sure, yeah, it's 22. Um, so that's one way. The other way could be, I don't know what time it is. Um, we could ask someone, I was wondering uh, what time. Here it gets a little different because it has to be in the past. And why? Because, well, I'm not wondering right now. I was wondering 10 seconds ago. Um, so it, it's, a, it's a silly thing, but I'm telling you, uh, I'm not even asking you a question whatsoever, but I'm telling you this question was in my head a minute ago. But, and, and so you say, sure, it's um, 20 to 9. Uh, so the fact that I'm, I'm using this beautifully formal structure, I'm also t not asking you a question. I'm just telling you I was thinking a question. Again, out of respect, you give me the answer. Um, as opposed to, I wonder what time it is. In this one, because the thought, like when I, when I say I wonder, I'm thinking out loud. This is the ultimate form of um, subtle questioning why. With I was wondering, we looked at this in another video, I'm speaking to you face to face, but I'm using indirect language. Right, so, but we're speaking, we're looking at each other in the eyes. With I wonder, I'm pretending that um, I don't know you're there. And I'm talking to myself out loud. And when I say, hmm, I wonder what the time is. You, I say it loudly because I, knew you're, I know you're going to listen and you're going to interject. Which means you're going to invite yourself into my conversation and answer my question. Um, I, wonder what, I wonder what the time is. The time. Um, actually, I think it's 20 to 9. Oh, shit, I didn't see you there. Thank you. So this is the most subtle form of questioning because, again, I'm not looking at you. I'm not talking to you. I'm just saying it to myself, and you invite yourself into my question to give me the answer. Um, so this is as indirect as you can get. This is also where, uh, like, it's, it's how we start conversations a lot of the time. And most of the time we can, we can start, like, uh, we can use it well for gossip because we love to gossip. We love to talk about other people. Um, just on very quickly, I don't know if I have time for this, but the one thing we can't do where is this. For example, we can say, I wonder where I live. I wonder where she lives. I wonder where we live. The only thing you can never say is, I wonder where you live. Um, we can use I wonder, which is thinking about a person and vocalizing it in the same moment. We can do it about we, she, he, it, um, I, and they. But we, I can't do it about you. And the reason is, is because it's creepy. Very, very creepy. It, it's a violation. So I'm allowed to wonder about you earlier. Hey, man, listen, I was wondering um, uh, where you lived. Yeah, sure, man, I, I live blah, 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 blah. I can say it online. Um, but I can't say, huh, I wonder where you live. No, it's fucking creepy. It's weird. Um, this is the same effect as when you walk into an elevator and someone else walks in. You don't feel uncomfortable because it's a person beside you. You feel uncomfortable because you're in their thoughts. It's a violation. When you walk into a party or into a room 
and 50 people all look at you, you don't feel uncomfortable because 50 people are looking at you. You feel uncomfortable because 50 people have you in their thoughts and you know about it. That's what's creepy about it. It's a violation. We don't like to be in other people's thoughts. We can have been in someone else's thoughts. That's fine, more or less. But when we know that people are staring at us and lingering us right now, it's, it's uncomfortable. That's why girls feel shitty when they walk into bars, because dudes are just staring at them and leering at them. And they know they're in those dudes' thoughts, um, usually in kind of fucked up ways. Um, so this we can't do. Um, and uh, so to solve that problem, anytime I talk directly to you, I always do it in this way. So it's okay if I say I was thinking about you. It's just really fucking creepy to think about you while I'm sitting in front of you or beside you. Um, as well, because the idea with I wonder, I'm not actually talking directly to you. So that's what makes all that creepier as well. Um, because we're saying it out loud. There's just a thought in our head that's vocalizing, which on its own is kind of an insane thing. I had a neighbor who used to do this. She used to walk past my gate, just randomly looking in my window saying, It's the vagabundo estrangero. She had no idea that the the thoughts she was thinking were coming out of the radio in the, in, in the front of her face. Um, so... That's really what I wonder is, right? It's that um, uh, we have no filter. And no, what is normally a quiet thought is now kind of projecting through our mouth, which is fine when we're doing gossip, right? But it's not when we're sitting next to a person and they're not invited into the conversation. Um, so that's very quickly. There's some examples of indirect speech. So our direct speech, let's just do a, a quick refresher because I really do have to go and teach some classes here. Um, shit. Our direct speech, um, don't complain about my swearing, by the way, because uh, fucking Irish Australian and seven years in Sao Paulo. So, um, uh, let me see. So a direct question, right? When we're, when we're confirming something, it's A, B, C, and D. Easy. When we're, when we're searching usually for objects, it's A, B, how's it going, buddy? C, and then we end here on our verb, D. But when we're doing an indirect, we start over here. So we start with a sentence or we start with a sec like a new question, usually like a do you know question because it requires nothing of the person. It's just a yes or no answer. And so we go from A, then we come over here. Let, let me clean this up a little bit. Uh, then we come over here, we go A, B, then we leave this out altogether, we don't care, C, and then, of course, the verb D. And so in both those cases, it's A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. And that's it. Um, in another video, I might come back and clarify all of that a little bit more. Uh, but for now, I have to go teach, um, earn some actual money, because these videos, um, uh, they're fun, uh, but they don't um, pay my rent. Um, as always, love the people who love you. Everybody is, is just a piece of shit. That's Fluke the Cat. Um, and my other cats are around here somewhere. Um, and there's also some new fucking pictures and shit behind me. And new microphones. Um, to try, uh, these investments are for you. <laughs> They're not. Um, that's it. Um, whatever the next video is, which will be six months, six years, uh, six weeks, or maybe tomorrow. I have no idea. But that's it.